be allowed. No. Okay. Well, you know, this is the first time uh, in a long time that Austin has elected a mayor uh, in a November election. Uh, traditionally, Austin's elections have been uh, in May uh, when voter turnout's much lower. So um, during a midterm election, you know, uh, a lot more people will be voting in this race. Uh, and it also just happens to be the time when uh, we're moving from a, an all-at-large system uh, to a district-based system, what's called a single-member district-based system. So we're moving from a six at-large with one mayor to ten district-based uh, seats and uh, one at-large mayor. Uh, and this is all coming at a time when um, the city is facing uh, unprecedented growth uh, and a host of problems that have kind of come to a head as, as our city's uh, doubled in size in the last 20 years and continues to grow it at a breakneck pace and so we have a lot of um, issues brought about by the growth that, that we need to deal with uh, and at the same time we're changing our government system so it's an incredibly important election not just because we're changing the system but uh, because the city has a lot of uh, issues that it needs to deal with uh, growing pains if you will as uh, we move from kind of a small town mentality to what really is a, is a big city now he said, Greg Abbott, Wendy Davis, I know that I think Mike Martinez is running for mayor. Um, other names, I know Mark Williams is running for something. Uh, Adler, somebody, running for something. I think there's city council, maybe. I just know that when I'm driving to my internship, I see this like big orange sign that says about the mayor. Um, I don't even remember what the name is, even though I've seen it oh so many times. I think it's Adler. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> and I see all I see all those posters around, so um, that caught my eye. Good evening, and thanks a lot for coming. I'm Steve Adler. You know, nobody knew Steve when we started. So eight months ago, Steve was new to the scene, running against incumbents that had been on the scene for eight years. You know, this campaign and Steve are testaments to the city's desire to have change in a new way forward. I've, I've known Steve for 20 years. He's been one of my best friends for the last 10. Um, a bunch of us went out looking for who could be the next mayor. We knew that the incumbents weren't what we needed. And Steve has this unique ability to bring people together. Now that we're coming together with 10 new council members, or 9 new council members, representing different parts of the city, we need a mayor that can build consensus. Steve has an ego, but it's a different kind of ego. He doesn't need credit for that. He will be able to give away the credit, and that makes for lots of success. So Steve has lived in Austin for 36 years. He came to go to UT Law School and um, obviously fell in love with the city and Barton Springs um, and stayed. He is an eminent domain attorney, but before that he worked as chief of staff for Elliott Shapley in the state ledge for eight years, I think. Um, so he has a history with politics um, and with the city. And then being an eminent domain attorney, he has gotten to know a lot of different groups and a lot about the land and codes and so I want to check, remember I told you about uh, Judy the other day, Judy and I showed you about the, uh, the documentary on 10-1? Yeah. Before or after the forum on Wednesday? Before the 6 o'clock forum, she verified. Okay, so... So does he have 15 minutes prior to the forum or 15 minutes after the forum? Probably be better after the forum. You think? And they'll all be set up. Well, I don't want him to be concerned about, you know, he's going to be concentrating on what he's going to say. He also has a big... Uh, Charity and nonprofit background. He helped uh, found the Texas Tribune. He was on. He was the chair of Jen Austin and Breakthrough um, and Ballet Austin. Um, he's done a lot um, behind the scenes for the for the city.
Hi, my name is Madeline, and I'm calling on behalf of the Steve Adler for Mayor campaign. How are you doing today? All right. Um, well, I'll make this pretty fast. I was just calling um, because, as you probably know, Tuesday, November 4th, is the last day for voting. And I um, just want to keep you posted with the fact that Steve Adler is endorsed by the Austin American Statesman and a large coalition of voters, including the Austin Neighborhoods Council, University Democrats, and the Austin Progressive Coalition. Um, do you know a lot about the, the mayor's race? Yeah. Yeah. That you have. Um, so I look forward to the conversation tonight. My name is Mike Martinez and I'm running for mayor of Austin. Uh, I served as an Austin firefighter since 1992 uh, and then I was elected to the council in 2006. I was president of the Austin Firefighters Association uh, and, and am proud of uh, the tremendous amount of support from many labor organizations uh, who have endorsed me in this race. Uh, my mission and the reason I'm running for mayor is because middle class, working class families need the strongest possible voice in the mayor's office. Good evening, I'm Cheryl Cole and I'm the current mayor pro tem. I am from Wichita Falls, Texas and I came to Austin on a scholarship because my mother was a maid and my mother's mother was a maid. I majored in accounting and I became a CPA and I met my husband and he went back to law school and I went back to law school but those two things didn't have anything to do with each other. <laughs> but we finally sealed the deal and the baby started to come and I got active in public service in the PTA. I was a PTA president and that's where moms and dads work hard for the benefit of future generations. Just look at Austin. You've lived here for the past uh, eight, nine years. Come on, let's look at, look at the situation. Has traffic gotten any better in the past eight years? with the two people that are running right now? Why didn't they improve it? Has our water crisis gotten any better in the past eight years while these two people have been in office? Our water bills are astronomical and the water is short right now. What about affordability in Austin? Oh my God, there's so many people who used to call Austin home, they can't anymore. The elderly, the cool, the hip, the musicians that used to identify with who Austin is, they can't afford to live here anymore. We've got all these people that are moving into town. Oh yeah, they can afford the million dollar condo, you know, downtown. But how about the people that have lived here for so long? They can't afford it, okay? So that's one of the other things that really hit home with people too is the affordability and he wants to do something about it. Tonight, the city of Austin has taken the first steps toward the new way forward. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And let there be no mistake about this, but we are in a battle right now for the very spirit and soul of the city of Austin, Texas. We have the opportunity to change the status quo and to choose a new way forward. Because the status quo is not serving this city well. With the status quo, with the current city council, with Mike Martinez and the other city council leadership, we have an affordability crisis in this city and taxes and property taxes keep going up. Utility bills keep going up. The poverty rate in this city keeps going up. The time and cost it takes to go through the permitting process in this city keeps going up. We are losing communities and we are losing people and with that we are losing the diversity that makes Austin special. That's the status quo. We can choose a new way forward. We can choose to do something about affordability in this city. We can adopt a homestead exemption. We can make sure that we look at affordability with everything that we do. We can fix 
a utility business plan and that is not serving our city well. Do something about the utility bills that we have. We can actually solve the traffic congestion problem that we have in this city. We can actually deal with the problems, the permitting process. We can take this opportunity with new leaders and new community, new leaders and new communities sitting at the city council table for the very first time and change what we're doing in this city. This is the opportunity to do that. Cities don't have the opportunity to change government usually because things get institutionalized and with that things don't change and they don't change unless government somehow or another gets blown up that's what's happened in this city with this new 10-1 and it is a gift and it is a once in a lifetime gift and if we start government on january the way that we have finished it in december then shame on us because we have one chance to do this right and that's what this campaign and that's what this election is about. We have come from nowhere to leading into the runoff election in this city. Woo! And that's because the people in this city want things to change. By the vote that we see tonight, where the incumbents between them could not muster 50% of the vote. We have seen that the city of Austin is ready for change. Yes. 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 We still have an election to go. Four weeks from now, early vote starts in the runoff election in Austin, Texas. It'll be six weeks. It'll be on December 16th. We have that much time to get our message out to the rest of the city. But if we do that well, if we take advantage of the fact that in this election, at this point in time, there are almost 3,000 people that have contributed to and are supporting this election. In that 3,000 people, we have more people than have ever stepped forward to support an election, a campaign, in the history of the city of Austin. We have that with what's happening right now. And we need to add to those numbers over the next four weeks because we have the chance to do something new. We have a chance to leave the status quo behind. We have a chance to save the spirit and soul of Austin. And this might be our last chance to make sure that we choose a path that does that. It is now our responsibility and our challenge to take the promise of 10-1 and make it real. Woo!